Exploring lakes, rivers, and reservoirs across the country with an unyielding goal to enlighten viewers from a fisheye perspective. Come along and we'll investigate the habitat. Much more than a fishing trip, this is an eye-opening aquatic experience. Welcome to Kim Stricker's Hook and Look. Rising water temperatures, increasing length of daylight, and perhaps even the gravitational effect of the lunar phase has triggered an instinctive urge in Micropterus dolomute. Yes, the annual spawning migration has begun for northern smallmouth bass, historically a controversial season, nonetheless anticipated by many an angler who look forward to catching and responsibly releasing their parental adversary. It was Native Americans who named the first full moon of June the Strawberry Moon. Algonquin tribes recognized it as a signal to gather maturing fruit, for strawberries are the earliest to ripen. On the other hand, for northern anglers, many believe that the first full moon after the water temperature reaches the mid to upper 50s indicates another commencement, the spawning activity of smallmouth bass. Even though not yet substantiated scientifically, past experience supports the full moon theory and points Hook and Look host and producer Kim Stricker towards the warming rays of the morning sun. They should be bedding up here. It's still a little chilly. It's 56, 57 degree water temperature, but it's been, it's been 40 degrees at night. It's been cold the last few days. Hopefully there's, there's some up. We got a full moon. It ought to be getting better. Hopefully we catch some good ones. What I'm gonna use is a Rage Menace Grub. And I'm putting it on a, a Turgrade football head. I mean, you've seen me catch largemouth flipping out of heavy cover and stuff, but this is such a good smallmouth bait. The Rage tails create a lot of action and and the, the fish are coming up on the beds right now, but I think this would be a good opportunity to show you how versatile this bait is. Come get that menace grub. There he is. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that was fun. Yes. Come here. Where are you going? Come on up here. Now he hit it with a tour grade head, just swimming by and then dropping it. Hopping a little bit in the bed. Nice fatty. Nice fatty, but let me show you this. Let him go. Get back in there. I rigged this weedless or snag free. Seeing I'm around logs, I was finding out that with the exposed hook, I was catching on the logs too much. So I, I rigged it just Texas rigged, Texposed or whatever, just like that. And that'll sit on the bottom just like that, and the tails will be moving. That's a good rig for smallmouth. Hello everyone and welcome to a new season of Hook and Look. As I mentioned before, the Rage Menace Grub is a great bait for smallies. Either crawled along the bottom or steadily swam horizontally. The kicking of the Rage tails absolutely drives these fish crazy. 
Another productive way to delicately present a menace grub off the bottom is with a drop shot rig. Often I'll switch presentations back and forth and the fish will generally strike one or the other. There he is. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I don't know how many people try a uh, drop shot in a menace grub, but it, it's a neat presentation. No question. Get the net. Make it easy on the fish, make it easy on me. Get in here. There you are. There, very nice. Very nice fish. Menace grub. And that little, that's a number one drop shot hook. And a 3 8 ounce turgrade tungsten drop shot weight. Look at that. He's got a couple little black spots on his lips. Yeah. Want more underwater content? Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hook and Look is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. Seaguar, trust Seaguar when everything is on the line. Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Aquaview, reinventing underwater cameras. Deep Blue Coffee, dive in. And by Indian River, Michigan Tourist Bureau. Pure water, pure trails, pure north. Every, every time we do a bed fishing show, I get at least two or three negative emails saying, oh, that's not sporting and this and that. They're not always that easy to catch. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta work with them, you gotta change presentations, change baits around. Plus we're catching them and we're immediately releasing them. You can see that greeny look to him when he turns a little bit. That greeny gold look. But this one don't want to play. But that fish is locked. There he is. There, ooh, that's a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, man. Look at this beauty. <laughs> this, this one isn't coming in that easy. Whoa. That's eight pound Tatsu floor carbon. Take it easy. That wind blowing me away. I should have got my power poles down. There we go. There's a nice fat chunky. Michigan smallmouth right there. You know it. Look how fat. Remember I said I, I could see that that greeny gold look as he would turn around the bed. A little bitty sliver just in the top. But again, the drop shotted menace grub. It's a valued amenity when Danny enters the water, capturing the action and effectiveness of each lure, and then reporting the fish's response to his dad topside. The ability to hook and look is undoubtedly the ultimate sight fishing experience as well as an unprecedented way for all of us to acquire visual knowledge. That's, that's the cast. Come on in. Another three feet. All right, you got his attention, he's coming. Work it, work it, and stop. Oh, oh, you got it, you got it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I told you! I knew it! Oh, there, you're fighting next to another bass. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, good silhouette. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> awesome. There we go. 
Perfect! And I'm blinking zero minutes of paint. <laughs> Strong! All right, all right, all right, all right. There's another bed right over here. Coming in, you're coming in. Keep coming. Yeah, oh, he bit at it. You are just a little to the right of the bed. But he still comes off and goes after it, you know? This is the one. Ready. I'm following you. Oh! Oh, he got it, got it, got it, got it! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he picked it up from behind it, just as it got off his vest. Another good fish. Oh yeah! Oh, I love it! I love it! That is fun. I can't wait to see the underwater footage. There's nothing like being able to see it all happen. See the bait work see the fish, how he reacts to it, and what it ultimately takes to catch it. Ooh, he don't like that old bait in his mouth. Beautiful. Oh, that's just gorgeous. Gorgeous. Well, let's put him in a net. Oh, that's a good fish. <laughs> ah. Oh, just healthy, strong fish. And again, there's nothing wrong with catching them and releasing them during the spawn. Enjoy them, that's what they're there for, but get them right back so nothing comes in on the beds. And you can see underwater that there's not predators eating the eggs while these fish are gone here. Good deal, love it. The Hook and Look experience will continue right after these messages. Welcome back to Hook and Look. With any presentation, the element of speed plays a significant role. And when sight fishing, you need to be keenly aware of this meaningful component. If a subtle, slow method isn't producing results, don't hesitate to experiment by adjusting to a more aggressive approach. <laughs> Jumping it, hopping it hard. Wow, that's a better fish than I thought it was. It's a good looking fish, too. Oh, that is a good fish. Isn't that pretty? He liked that more aggressive presentation. Come right over here. Good net. Ah. <laughs> That's a dandy. Oh man, isn't that awesome? That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. But he he wanted he wanted it hopped like that. Yeah, he did. That's what it took to trigger him. Just a really quick jerk. Mm. I like it. I like it. Well, let's do it again. He'll go right back to his bed, finish what he was doing. The nest building yearn of male smallmouth is thigmotrophic, meaning that if available, they prefer to fan their nests alongside the protective shield of some type of hard substrate, logs, stumps, or rocks and in many northern Michigan lakes, invasive zebra mussels concurrently colonize on these same solid objects. As you can plainly see, these sharp clusters of mussels form a harsh environment for anglers, which demands the need for an abrasive resistant fishing line. That's why Kim prefers to use Seaguar fluorocarbon, either Abrasix or Tatsu. Anything less is destined for failure under these serrated conditions. I'm gonna stay where I'm at. He's looking at it. Oh, he got him! You got him! <laughs> yeah! 
<laughs> Finally. Finally. That's a good sized fish. He is a good sized fish. I knew he was catchable from the beginning, but man, look at We sat there for 15 minutes and tried 20 casts and finally got him to bite. You gotta present the right bait is one thing, but present it in the right fashion and the right spot on the bed is another. Whoever says bed fish is easy is <laughs> they don't bed fish. That's for sure. What's up here, fish? Nice and easy. Oh, good, sure looking fish. This water is still clear. I love it. That was quite a dive. Great strike shots, great catches, great fish. Water clarity is great. It's been a good day. Good day? I'd say it's been a great day. We'll be right back. This portion of Hook and Look is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, introducing the all new Evan Rood E-Tech G2. Cush it, world's most comfortable rod butt. Sims Fishing Products, the choice of professional guides and anglers worldwide. And by Sportfish Michigan, your source for the top charter captains and guides. Out of all the revolutionary features about the Evinrood E-Tech G2, I just gotta share this with you. I mean, look at the amount of equipment that we carry. We've got dive tanks, dive cameras, dive weights, all our fishing equipment, a full tank of gasoline, and this Ranger Z520 pops right out of the hole. That's impressive. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. In fact, it looks like a real good one. A special good one. <laughs> this is great. This is great. This is great. Get up here. Get up here. Look at that. Oh. My net over here. starting to eat as the day goes on. They're starting to eat. There's a good fish. Man, big old smoky one. Oh, yeah. Strong fish. Look at that. Beautiful, dark, gorgeous smallmouth. There's nothing wrong with Fishing around beds, in my opinion, as long as we let them go. Let them go and then get back on them eggs. All right. Nice chunk. Good job. You've probably noticed the cushion, rod butt cushions on my spinning rods. The main reason I'm using that is most spinning rods are top heavy depending on the composition and the length of the rod. And if you add a cushion to the butt, you'll see that that balances it out. You can also add a dime or a quarter, put that inside there to give it a little more weight. But it does, it balances your rod so there's you know, less strain on your wrist when you fish. There he is. There. Not bad fish at all, to say the least. <laughs> Look at him. Just good, solid, 
chunky smallmouth in there. A lot of fun. That's for sure. Yes. There you go. He, he bit it with one eye. <laughs> Missing an eye there. Nice. Northern Michigan smallmouth. Actually, we are right in the, the heart of Sportfish Michigan's territory. Even Home Lake. <laughs> you know it. You need to come up here and try some of these smallmouths. That's for sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed our hook and look perspective today. Next week, our water isn't quite as clear, but our objective is as we reveal the landscape along the ledges at Kentucky Lake. Our good friend Sam Lashley is undoubtedly an offshore expert, and he'll gladly share his knowledge at locating and catching quality fish on the drops. That's next week on Hook and Look. Hook and Look is a Kim Stricker production.